Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over a concept called uncoupling enzymes or uncoupling proteins. So first of all, let's answer the question, what is a coupling protein? In the context of the respiratory chain, coupling proteins or coupling enzymes are enzymes that move hydrogen ions from the intermembrane space into the matrix and couple that movement with, a, with the synthesis of ATP. Obviously, the only example of that is ATP synthase. Okay. Remember from the electron transport chain, the three complexes, one, three, and four, pump protons actively from the matrix into the intermembrane space, giving a very high concentration of protons in the intermembrane space and a relatively low concentration in the matrix. So there is a tendency, both by concentration and electric forces, that these protons would like to move back into the matrix. They're higher in energy, higher in potential energy in the intermembrane space, and the spontaneous movement would be to move back into the matrix. Okay giving a release of energy. If I have a coupling reaction, that's going to couple that proton diffusion into the matrix with ATP synthesis. Thus, ATP synthase is a coupling enzyme. However, we have a, a few others, uh, particularly uncoupling protein, UCP right here, and then nicotinamide nucleotide translocase and nicotinamide nucleotide transhydrogenase. Those are two examples of uncoupling proteins. The reason they're uncoupling is, notice, they move hydrogen ions into the matrix, both of them, but they don't couple it to ATP synthesis. They couple it to a completely different reaction, or really no reaction at all, as in the case of uncoupling protein. Okay? So the key here is an uncoupling protein or enzyme is an enzyme that facilitates the movement of protons from the intermembrane space to the matrix, but it does not couple it with ATP synthesis. Okay, and we're talking about that, of course, with respect to the electron transport chain. But we'll find that these proteins, we're not going to talk about this one now, but particularly this one in blue and the purple one, are of vital importance for certain things, i.e. the uncoupling protein designated UCP. All right, the uncoupling proteins are situated in the same membrane of the, of the mitochondria as ATP synthase. It's going to be the inner membrane. Now, remember, for coupling, hydrogen ions move through ATP synthase as channels, as we talked about in previous videos, but that hydrogen ion movement that is exergonic or spontaneous is coupled to ATP synthesis. That's why it's a coupling reaction. For uncoupling protein, this might seem like it's kind of useless, but it actually plays a, a huge role in babies. This baby Goku shown right here. Hydrogen ions move through uncoupling protein. This is uncoupling protein 1. And when they move through uncoupling protein, first of all, the proton movement is actually not coupled to anything. So it's coupled to nothing, not even another reaction. It's certainly not ATP synthesis, but it's not even coupled to another reaction. It just lets hydrogen ions through. The, the reason that's done is because when hydrogen ions move through here, the hydrogen ions move with a lot of kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy as the hydrogen ions move through here, dissipates heat. Okay, so heat is produced. So if you have a lot of mitochondria and a lot of uncoupling protein, and you have a lot of proton gradient, you can create a lot of heat. Now, can you imagine why that might be critical for a baby? Well, babies are more prone or susceptible to certain illnesses um, sort of that might result from leaving them out in the cold. I'm not saying you leave your baby out in the cold, obviously. But if, if a baby gets cold, babies can't shiver. Human babies cannot shiver. It's only until they get a little bit older that they actually can shiver. So if a, the reason we shiver, shivering is the oscillation between muscle contraction and relaxation. Contraction, relaxation. And when muscles contract like that, they produce a lot of heat. Well, babies can't shiver. So they have to have a lot of uncoupling protein. And the uncoupling protein is stored in their fat, but it's particularly high in a, an, another type of fat that most adults don't really have a lot of. And that's brown fat. And a fat cell is termed an adipocyte. And brown adipocytes look very different than white adipocytes. I'll just call them fat cells from now on. A white fat cell, which is the, the fat in your gut right now, they have a humongous lipid droplet. That lipid droplet contains things like triacylglycerols for energy storage. And that lipid droplet is so massive, it forces all the organelles and such to one side of the, the cell. I mean, it's, it's enormous. It takes up an enormous volume of that cell. 
and there's very little mitochondria, which is why the normal fat cells, when you think of fat, um, they're slow metabolizers, because they don't really have any mitochondria. A brown fat cell is very different. Brown fat cells have a lot of mitochondria. Notice they have multiple fat droplets, but the fat droplets are very small. These brown fat cells don't necessarily store a lot of fat. That's really not their function. They have a lot of these brown, a lot of these uh, mitochondria, and that those mitochondria contain a lot of uncoupling protein. So a brown fat cell, the purpose in a baby having a lot of that is in the event that it's cold out or something like that, they can generate heat. Okay, they generate a lot more heat because they can't shiver. Okay, not to mention because they have more mitochondria, brown fat cells actually have a lot more of a higher metabolic rate because mitochondria are responsible for the higher level of metabolism more so than glycolysis. Okay, in fact, they've actually shown that brown fat cells are actually more closely related to muscle cells than they are white adipocytes. Okay. And another thing here is brown fat cells are inducible. In fact, in adults, you can actually induce the formation of uh, brown fat cells. It turns out there are precursor cells in, uh, in fat cells, and you can induce them to become brown fat cells. And certain things that you might expect cold, if it's cold, it seems like a negative feedback system to make more brown fat cells so that you can produce more heat. In fact, you'd find people in, who chronically live in colder environments, such as Canada, um, maybe northern Russia, Siberia, they would have more brown fat cells than people who live, you know, the south side of America, okay? Exercise is another important thing that induces brown fat cell formation, okay? And that's one reason why if you exercise on top of just straight increasing your metabolic rate, you know, balancing your hormones, the addition of brown adipocytes actually adds or contributes to the fact that you tend to lose weight um, when you exercise, okay? It increases your metabolic rate overall. So brown fat cells are actually a good thing to have, okay? And this is just a comparison of uh, microscope slides, light microscopes, looking at the two tissues. You can see that white adipose tissue, this is, an, this is let me just find one, um, this is a good example right here, this right here. You can see the boundaries of the cell. This whole thing is an adipocyte, a white fat cell. And it, you can see it's nothing but white, that's the fat droplet. This little purple thing, the nuclei stains purple. So the nucleus is pushed all the way to the side and most of the other organelles are over there too, you just can't see them. But you notice on all of these white fat cells, the nuclei are all pushed to the side and these fat droplets are enormous. Brown adipose tissue, the brown color comes from all these mitochondria. Okay, they're loaded with them and they have a much higher metabolic rate. They also don't store as much um, fat in them or lipid droplets and they have lots more of that uncoupling protein that allows the generation of heat. So remember, babies can't shiver so they make a lot of this uncoupling protein to uncouple the proton gradient but it also doesn't couple the proton leakage to ATP synthesis and that's what generates heat. All right. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications.